regulations pertaining to retail banking. We all know banks that mobilize and allocate savings efficiently allocate capital to endeavor with the highest expected social returns and exert sound governance over funded firms foster innovation and growth. RBI supervises and gives guidelines to all other banks operating in India in order to ensure better and nominal banking facilities and the growth of economy. In this lesson, we will discuss the need for regulation in banking, explain the meaning and significance of internal regulation in banking, describe the essence of business facilitator model for banks in India, and explain the meaning and significance of external regulation in banking. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain the need for regulation in banking. Define internal regulation. Discuss the business facilitator model. Define external regulation. Explain capital allocation and risk assignment norms. State RBI's financial sector technology vision document and discuss business continuity management. Bank regulations are the form of government regulation which subject banks to certain requirements, restrictions and guidelines. The institutional setting of the banking sector in India is largely influenced by the Reserve Bank of India and the central government. The RBI is the main regulatory authority for the Indian banking sector. Under the Banking Regulation Act of 1949, it has extensive powers for licensing, supervising and controlling banks. The objectives of bank regulation and the emphasis vary between jurisdictions. The most common objectives are prudential means to reduce the level of risk bank creditors are exposed to. Systematic risk reduction means to reduce the risk of disruption resulting from adverse trading conditions for banks causing multiple or major bank failures. Confidentiality means to protect banking confidentiality. Credit allocation means to direct credit to favored sectors and avoid misuse of bank means to reduce the risk of banks being used for criminal purposes, x for example laundering the proceeds of crime. The basic elements of an internal regulation are almost same for all kind of organizations. However, the structure, nature and extent of internal regulation depends upon the type of organization and the complexity of its business. A strong internal regulation helps the management to achieve the bank's objectives, long-term profitability targets and maintain reliable financial and managerial reporting. The basic elements of an effective internal control system of a bank or control environment is the underlying foundation for the success of all the other elements of the internal control. The control environment has an effect on the effectiveness of the specific regulations and provides the background against which other controls are operated. An effective regulation system requires that all material risk, internal and external, controllable and uncontrollable, that could affect the achievement of the bank's objectives are recognized and continually assessed. Control activities are the policies and procedure that ensure that bank personnel are following the management directives for achieving the bank's objectives. Segregation and rotation of duties reduces a person's opportunity to commit fraud and ensure detection of errors and mistakes. The overall effectiveness of the bank's internal regulation should be monitored on an ongoing basis. For ensuring greater financial inclusion and increasing the outreach of the banking sector, it has been decided in public interest to enable banks to use the services of non-governmental organization or self-help groups as intermediaries in providing financial and banking services through the use of business facilitator models. In business facilitator model, banks may use intermediaries such as NGOs or farmers clubs, cooperatives, community-based organization, IT-enabled rural outlets of corporate entities, post offices, insurance agents, well-functioning panchayats, village knowledge centers, 
एग्री क्लिनिक्स और एग्री बिजनेस सेंटर्स कृषि विज्ञान केंद्रस एंड के वी आई सी और के वी आई बी यूनिट्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन द कम्फर्ट लेवल ऑफ द बैंक फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग फेसिलिटेशन सर्विसेज सर्विसेज आर नॉट इंटेंडेड टू इन्वॉल्व द कंडक्ट ऑफ बैंकिंग बिजनेस बाई बिजनेस फैसिलिटेटर्स नो अप्रूवल इज रिक्वायर्ड फ्रॉम रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया फॉर यूजिंग द इंटरमीडियरीज फॉर फैसिलिटेशन ऑफ द सर्विसेज as the engagement of intermediaries as business facilitators involves significant reputational legal and operational risk due consideration should be given by banks to those risk they should also endeavor to adopt technology based solutions for managing the risk besides increasing the outreach in a cost effective manner the foreign capital flows have a say in filling the resource gap in india where the domestic savings are insufficient to finance investment india need for capital in the form of ecbs and other foreign loans and aids keeping in view the growing requirements of foreign capital in india indian government has come up with many policies and liberalized regulations to manage foreign capital in india some of the significant and recent measures taken by indian government to manage foreign investments in india are foreign direct investment it is permitted under the automatic route in items or activities in all sectors up to the sectoral caps except in certain sectors where investment is prohibited an indian company issuing shares to a person resident outside india can receive such amount in advance the amount received has to be reported within 30 days from the date of receipt of funds FII's investment by non-residents is permitted under the portfolio investment scheme to entities registered as FII's and their sub accounts under SEBI FII regulations. The investment by NRIs under the portfolio investment scheme is restricted to 5% by individual NRIs or OCBs not incorporated in Bangladesh and Pakistan and 10% in aggregate. Indian companies are allowed to raise resources through issue of ADR or GDR and the eligibility of the issuer company is aligned with the requirements under the FDI policy FVCIs are also allowed to invest in debt instruments floated by the IVCUs under the automatic route ECB up to 500 million US dollars per borrowing company per financial year is permitted only for foreign currency expenditure for permissible end users of ECBs the NRIs are permitted to freely acquire immovable property the capital allocation and risk assignment norms given by the basel committee in addressing the rigidities in the 1988 capital accord by evolving a comprehensive and risk sensitive a process of how businesses divide their financial resources and other sources of capital to different processes people and projects overall it is management's goal to optimize capital allocation so that it generates as much wealth as possible for its shareholders as capital is the most expensive source of funding any decrease or increase in such capital allocation could translate into substantial savings or additional cost for banks it is difficult to measure exactly the potential loss for each of the different risk experienced by financial institutions consequently a substantial amount of research is currently underway with respect to the methodological issues concerning the appropriate measurement of these risk both at a single position and at the portfolio level The advent of liberalization and globalization has seen a lot of changes in the focus of Reserve Bank of India as a regulator of the banking industry. Deregulation of interest rates and moving away from issuing operational prescriptions have been important changes. The focus has clearly shifted from micro monitoring to macro management. supervisory role is also shifting more towards off-site surveillance rather than on-site inspections the focus of inspection is also shifting from transaction based exercise to risk based supervision 
the integration of various financial services would need a number of legislative changes to be brought about for the system to remain contemporary and competitive. The role of regulator would be critical for ensuring soundness of the system by fixing benchmark standards for capital adequacy and prudential norms for key performance parameters. Adoption of best practices, especially in areas like risk management, provisioning, disclosures, credit delivery, etc. Adoption of good corporate governance practices. Creation of an institutional framework to protect the interest of depositors and regulating the entry and exit of banks including cross-border institutions. Businesses may range from small to medium, medium to large, from process to discrete industry, from rural to urban, from national to global and so on. Each segment has unique demands for a customized range of products and services combined with convenience at low cost, anytime, anywhere. The five components of the business continuity management model are organizational. The bank must be clear in its vision and direction. It should have clear strategic objectives with respect to markets and geographies to be served. Volumes to be achieved each year. Diversity of portfolio of products and services to be offered in line with the demands of the segments being served. And multiplicity of channels to be deployed for delivering products and services. Processes relates to processes for ensuring continuity of banking transactions and not the rules and regulations governing those operations. People is the most important and critical resource to ensure continuity of businesses on both the demand and supply side. The knowledge, commitment and motivation of employees at all levels in the bank are paramount to ensure business continuity. The terms vendors, suppliers and contractors are passé in present times. The correct term for representing all those who contribute towards the success of the business is business partners. External stakeholders comprise the government, central state and municipal, regulatory bodies, professional associations and media. An excellent working relationship in an atmosphere of trust with these stakeholders may also be crucial to find the requisite support for continuing the business in regard to operational logistics and image. There have been significant advances in the usage of technology in the banking sector in general. The facilities include physical space, amenities, communication and transportation. Better facility management is therefore a key issue to be dealt with by banks. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. The SEBI is the main regulatory authority for the Indian banking sector. Right or wrong? Wrong. A strong internal regulation helps the management to achieve the bank's objectives, long-term profitability targets and maintain reliable financial and managerial reporting. Right or wrong? Right. In business facilitator model, banks may use intermediaries. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Bank regulations are the form of government regulation which subject banks to certain requirements, restrictions and guidelines. Capital allocation is a process of how businesses divide their financial resources and other sources of capital to different processes, people and projects. For ensuring greater financial inclusion and increasing the outreach of the banking sector, it has been decided in public interest to enable banks to use the services of non-governmental organizations or self-help groups as intermediaries in providing financial and banking services through the use of business facilitator models. The capital allocation and risk assignment norms given by the Basel Committee in addressing the rigidities in the 1988 Capital Accord by evolving a comprehensive and risk-sensitive deregulation of interest rates and moving away from issuing operational prescriptions have been important changes. Portfolio management is the art and science of making decisions about investment mix and policy, matching investment to objectives 
asset allocation for individuals and institutions and balancing risk versus performance. The five components of the business continuity management model are organizational, processes, people, technology and facilities management.